Jake O'Donnell here. I've been getting a bunch of queries lately on Instagram, so for today's video I'm going to hit you with three tips for when you're starting out in photography. Let's go! Okay, so these days when people are trying to get into photography, the bulk of why they're doing it is either because of social media or because they're trying to start up a business. So with that in mind, the first tip I'm going to give is to know your needs before you purchase a camera. The mistake most people make when they're buying a camera is thinking that instantly any form of DSLR is going to be a superior image maker to their phone. And the problem with that is that they're not going to purchase the camera that's best suited to their needs because they'll think that any suits. So what you really need to do is consider, firstly, what you're shooting and the display format for your images. So if the predominant place that you're going to be putting your images is Instagram, then most camera bodies are going to produce images that are overkill for Instagram anyway. So the thing that you need to be thinking about most is the lenses. For example, if you're shooting landscapes, a wider lens like a 24mm, but then if you want to be shooting people, you'd be looking at something longer like maybe 50 or 85 and that kind of realm. Zooms can be great for versatility with that sort of thing. If you're a budding influencer looking at having the versatility for something like a travel Instagram where you need to be able to capture landscapes nicely but also to be able to feature people and yourself in those images without any sort of distortion that you're going to get from those wider angles. Something like a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 is excellent. The second tip is that lighting is the most important part of photography. You've got to think in some ways of your camera as a recording device. If what you're giving it to record is not very good, then even if you have the best camera in the world, you're not going to get a fantastic shot. You need to spend your time sort of understanding a little bit more about how to light or to look for good light. And that's going to help inform better decisions when you're trying to improve your photography skills or to help you create situations in which you're going to be producing better photos. My art teacher always used to say that light is like the paint of photography and it's so true. A good tip is to look for natural formations around the world that in and of themselves help to produce lighting that's a little more dynamic or flattering. For example, when I was starting out and predominantly using natural light, I really loved alleyways because of the way they funnel light. They block out lighting from the side which helps to create shadows and cheekbones and give structure to the, the bones in the face. But then the front and the rear light help to create a nice soft illumination here, generally because the lighting is a little bit distant. The time of day is a huge factor in getting the ideal light. And I think the problem that a lot of new photographers have in terms of taking photos that they're happy with is shooting at the wrong time of day so that the lighting is too harsh for them to deal with or doesn't produce the kind of effect that they want. A really good tip is to try shooting at golden hour, which is the hour just before sunset because when the sun is really low like that, the lighting's softer, it's warmer, you're not gonna really get any harsher shadows. Whereas if you're shooting in the middle of the day and the lighting is really harsh and intense, often you'll need to use a modifier like a scrim of some sort to diffuse it if you're shooting just out in the open air, otherwise you'll be forced to look for shade. My third and final tip is to shoot in RAW. What that actually means is that there's a quality setting in the camera where you have a list of JPEG qualities and then above that is an option called RAW. What that does is takes a photo that isn't yet compressed into a JPEG, so you have a lot more RAW data to use. If you want to wrap your head around it a little bit easier, think of them like cakes. A JPEG is a baked cake where you can only make surface adjustments like icing if you want to think of icing like filters for example. Whereas a raw image is like the cake batter. You can add more sugar or more eggs if you need to and really play with the core components of what make up the broader cake a lot more easily. So with shooting things like night shoots for example, you can bring so much more detail out of the shadows when you shoot raw because all of those details are still there and you can make a lot more aggressive adjustments when you're editing and processing the image as opposed to what a JPEG can handle. 
It's such an easy, simple thing that someone who's new to photography can do to help them elevate the quality of their photos instantly and give them a lot more freedom when they're editing. So that's all for today, guys. Just a really quick video to answer some of the questions I've been receiving in my Instagram DMs about what camera should I choose, what lens should I get, how can I make my editing better. But I think I am going to follow up this video with a similar format, three tips about editing so that I can show you a little bit more about what follows the process of um, taking the photo to start developing your own style and giving you a bit more flexibility there. If you want to check out more of my work or keep up to date with what I'm doing, I've linked my Instagram and socials in the description below and I'll also pop them up on the screen hopefully. Um, but yeah, I, um, it's great to be back and I can't wait to be creating more and sharing it with you soon. Thanks!